Welcome to Ask Sarah with Sarah Wiseman, where you'll learn to awaken your divine intuition and open your human heart. Sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. Here's Sarah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Sarah. I'm Sarah Wiseman. For a lot of you guys, it's the first time you've seen me uh, streaming live on Facebook. Maybe not the first time, but it's uh, not something I've done much and hoping to bring this to you into, um, into this new year, 2021. Fantastic year, lots of great stuff going on. And I uh, just want to have this be an offering to you to, you know, learn some stuff, open your intuition, open your spirituality, get through the day, which is, uh, you know, sort of a lot of what this is all about, and um, um, just kind of connect with each other as kindred uh, spiritual community, because uh, what I find is that there's so many people um, feeling like all of you do, and you feel like maybe nobody else around feels this way. And of course, that's not true. Lots and lots of very sensitive souls in this universe. And hopefully this is a place we can connect. Um, a lot of you guys are like, oh, I didn't know her hair was so long. Yes, this is what, as you all know too, uh, you don't get your hair cut for over, <laughs> over a year and suddenly it's long. So uh, anyway, it'll probably get longer as we continue through our uh, COVID experience together. Not to make light of it at all, but uh, you know, all these, these practical things have been kind of interesting too. So today's show is called, uh, How Can I Open My Psychic Gifts? It's something we've talked about a lot. Learn why intuition is not something separate from yourself, but who you are innately. And innately means within, innately means it's your essence. There isn't um, anything that needs to be added or fixed. It's really uh, psychic ability is not something to add on. It's something to open up or maybe just to, just to remember. It's just a way of remembering your true essence. We're gonna do a little meditation in just a moment around that. As a lot of you know, uh, this is Ask Sarah is a um, Ask Sarah is a call-in show. We, today we've got free readings Tuesday. I see some callers are already calling in or on, and on hold, and we'll get to you guys real uh, quickly. Um, the call-in number, if you'd like to call in to be live on the show, and you'll be live on audio only. We don't have a way <laughs> to get you on video. And also, you know, people might be in their bathrobes and so forth, so we want to avoid any surprises. So anyway, call-in number for Free Readings Tuesday, which is today, 844-390-8255. And this show is streaming live on Facebook on the Contact Talk Radio Facebook. It will be posted later on my Facebook. And as always, for those of you who listen to the, the audio stream, it's going to be on all those places. Um, let's see, iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn FM, I can't remember, there's a whole bunch of them. If you're interested in finding the stream that you like best, go to my website, sarahwiseman.com, and then just go to podcasts. There's like oh, so much stuff there, which leads me to during, um, you know, a lot of us had talked about what is the, are there some benefits to this uh, enforced isolation? And for me, um, taking away all distraction, which I kind of already do as my lifestyle, um, it allowed me to create a whole bunch of stuff for you. So when you go to the website, you're going to look for a whole new thing, Divine Astrology, which is a monthly channeled forecast. We're going to dive into that a little bit today. And then brand new, Intuitology, which is a monthly teaching podcast, which is going to teach you um, a specific element of spiritual intuition. Those are, they're kind of like, they're not TED Talks. They're kind of like Sarah Talks. I talk about different aspects. So those are free. Go there, check it out, sarahwiseman.com. 
For February, we have the Manifesting Project. It's just $15 self-study course. And for those of you who um, really want to dive deep and work with me and work with other people who really want to dive deep, we've got Intuition University direct training this spring in March, and we are signing up now. And we are practically full. So uh, I'm going to probably mention it one more time. But basically, if that's of interest, you go to the website, check it out under sarahweisman.com training. Um, let's just, let's just, uh, we're going to go to the free readings Tuesday in just a moment. But let's just go ahead and close our eyes. And I want you to the guides gave me this uh, little meditation last night when I was uh, preparing for the show. And I want you to just breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth and in through the nose and out through the mouth. And I want you to just go ahead and lift out of your body. Let your spirit self begin to fly up into the sky. So kind of like looking at yourself from below. And then we're gonna go all the way up into space. And we're going to look at ourselves from space onto planet Earth. And then I'd like you to do a little bit of stuff with, with time. You're just going to let Earth rotate so that you kind of don't see where you were. You're just seeing the planet uh, just uh, moving around. And then I want you to sort of try and find back where you were, looking down, where am I? The planets rotated. And then you're just going to rotate it back and, and kind of begin to see your beautiful smallness in terms of the great significance of the planet all the people here and all the animals and all the plants and all the bacterium and all the small things and you're just a little piece of that and then i want you to kind of put a filter on earth on gaia and imagine that you can see not this just this time frame but all your past lives so you're starting to see yourself as soul. Here you are in Africa. There you are in China. There you are in the US before it was the US. There you are in this place where your ancestors are from. And you're seeing how your soul self has left these little imprints all over this planet. And frankly, probably on other planets too, but we're just looking at all you across time, all the times you've been on Gaia. And so you're getting an idea of the smallness of you, the quickness of you, the temporary nature of each lifetime in this small view. We're expanding so we can see our smallness. And yet, let's go back, let's zoom back from space into the sky, into our place where we live, into the place where we are. And I want you to go right into your heart. This lifetime, this moment. And I want you to just think of all the people and all the things you deeply love, including yourself, about this particular lifetime right here, right now, in this moment. 
then you might have a person come into your mind or a feeling of a memory come into your heart and just feel the bigness of you, the enormous warmth and beauty and grace of your heart, which is where the soul resides. And feel that too. And understand that both of these, the big and the small, the fully present now and the fully present in all infinite space, this is all you as a soul. And when we talk about psychic or spiritual ability, this is all we're doing is we're remembering our innate. And this view, the big and the small, helps a lot when we're dealing with the drama and the dysfunction and the pain often of life especially recently, last few years. All right, we're just going to come back to this reality in 10987654321. And we are back in the room. And that is um, going small, going expanding up to go small, coming into the heart to go big is a way of resetting yourself. Um, as you can tell, uh, probably as you're looking around, you feel a little giddy or you feel a little brighter or you just feel more relaxed. Um, that anchoring into your true soul self, super useful to just shift the whole mood, right? Okay, so this is new to me. I'm gonna see who we've got here. I think I have got K from Washington DC first and bear with the technicality because we're, I'm using it for the first time, but I think I've got Kay from Washington DC calling into the show. Kay? Okay, so I can't Hi, hear. Sarah. Oh, hey Kay, welcome. Thank you for calling in. I'm so happy to be back. The show took quite a long break, so I'm happy to be back with you. What's going on for you or how Thank can you I for having you? me. Yeah, what can I help you out with today? What do you want to look into? Whatever you see. Um, just share with me whatever comes through for you. The way that I work is I like people to have some pretty specific questions because I know that you've got things mm -hmm. that you've been thinking about in your life, right? I know that you, you've got stuff on your mind. So... Um, tell us a little bit about, like, share, and uh, tell us a little bit about what what you have been thinking about or what you are wondering about. A new house is one. Mm -hmm. um, Did you get so, that? Yeah. So um, do you live in Washington, D.C. now? Is that your general area? Yes. And mm -hmm. I definitely see, so a lot of people are thinking of moving, right? Uh, the, the, the pandemic has brought us to this place of doing a lot of inner questioning and a lot of wondering, uh, what would it be like different? Where would we be different? And so for some people, um, the move is around wanting an, some inner movement, which is another thing we've all been going through this last year. And for other people, uh, the idea of moving is about needing to move to a different place so that the universe can put you into position for different stuff, like for new stuff that's coming to you. And you feel in the latter category. So you have this urge to move because the universe wants to in your case, get you out of particular situations and energies and bring you to um, a higher level situation and energy so that you can flourish and also so that other things can happen, so that synchronicities and um, the ways the universe works with us can start to happen to you there. So are you thinking of going um, more west? Is that what you're thinking? 
I'm thinking of staying in the general area. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I am open to wherever I am needed. I'm completely it, open. I have no resistance to going anywhere. Yeah. So what I see for you, so the way I do it is I kind of put up a little map in my head. My geography is not great in terms of knowing what states are, but um, what I've been seeing for lots of people is moves to oh, Arizona, New Mexico, that kind of thing. Um, some people I'm seeing moving uh, warmer places like Florida, but for you, I'm seeing moving west, but not particularly outside of what I would call your your like environmental region or your, um, so that the basic uh, natural environment would be fairly similar. The seasons would be fairly similar. So are you in, um, mm-hmm. it feels like you just need to move to a smaller place that is more relaxed, more liberal, if that's possible nearby. And um, it's a little bit west, maybe a little bit west and north. What, when are you thinking of trying to make this all happen? Yesterday. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So yeah. I've... Good. That's good. Yeah. That yes. Anytime between like, it'll be before March. So um, I think maybe making your circle a little, a little smaller, like uh, looking 50 miles radius, but then going West, that would be a good way to sort of spot where you're supposed to be. Uh, and be- it'll be before March, which is really soon. We're already in February. So this is, this is happening fast. You'll either have found it by March or you'll actually be moved by March. So there's a slight whirlwind awaiting you. And the whole idea for you is, Are you? go ahead. No, no, I don't want to interrupt. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's whatever's like, coming uh, through you just. It's calmer, more nature, more gentle, um, more peaceful. And the idea is the universe is like, you need a break and you can't get a break where you are now. It's too much drama. (laughs) Just just say it's too much drama. It's too much negative vibration. You've got to get out of that orbit of uh, negativity and move to a more restful place. But it's not like you're going to Hawaii. You know, it's, it's a pretty similar move. And it's just just enough to get you out into a better spot. Anyway, good luck to you, Kate. Thank you for calling. Uh, okay. We will uh, hope that all goes well and wish you well. And uh, thanks for calling into the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yep. Let us know how it goes. You can email me at the website if you want. Uh, let's see. I can't tell if we have other callers here or not. I think we've got some other callers on hold. Again, the technology is a little new for me. We do. Yay. So we'll wait to see who those folks Hello? are. Hi. Who's this? Hello. Hi. This is Dennis. Oh, hi, Dennis. Welcome. Where are you hi, calling you? from? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, from my living room. <laughs> Perfect. And we're, we're it, in the bigger it, sense, are long, you? It, <laughs> Uh, Long Beach, California. Long Beach. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So you guys see me looking down. So I'm just taking, I take notes on my little notebook and that is part of the process of how stuff comes through for me. Well, I'm calling from my, I guess it's an office. It's in my house. I'm surprised the dog hasn't come in yet, but we'll wait for that soon. What can I help you out with today, (laughs) Dennis? Well, I, I read your, inspir- your inspirational writings every morning, um, and I, then I just noticed that you, during the show, if we call, we can get a free reading, because I had thought about calling to get a reading from you at any time before, so I thought I would just maybe take advantage of this and see if you would give me a reading. Yeah. What kind of things do you want to look into? What questions do you have? Um well, I have a mostly just on on my life's path, um, and then on, on even on a medical path. Um, basically, those two things, you know. 
Yeah, I do think um, health is something that came up right away. So um, I don't see any, it's almost like you need to care for yourself and have, um, I wouldn't say that you should take the attitude of you're caring for yourself medically or health wise. I think the bigger idea for you is that you're caring for yourself vibrationally. So if you care for yourself vibrationally, which it feels like you, you mostly do a lot, um, that kind of takes care of anything that could have been a concern. It's not that you stop dealing with doctors at all. It's just the, the, the bigger focus is the, the spiritual vibration of the being as opposed to, you know, taking this medicine or eating this diet. Um, what, what have you been facing? It feels like you might have been doing some medical things lately. What, what have you been doing or, think, or worrying about? Um, I've had um, been diagnosed with a, a low thyroid and it's causing all kinds of different issues that are hard to put together. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just looking at doing uh, either pharmaceuticals, which I just started on, and I'm, I'm kind of on a holistic bent, and so it's kind of against the gain, grain of what I mm -hmm. believe in. But at this at this point, I'm, I was kind of desperate, and I wanted to try something for a while. So that's that's kind of where I'm at. And how much are you outside in nature uh, right now? Is that something you're able to do where you are? Um, I, yeah, I, I do go for about an hour and a half walk every morning mm -hmm. and then probably two, two to three times a week, a, um, a good eight mile bike ride. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, that's about it. That's about it for uh, being outside. So what I'm receiving is, um, um, those are great. Those are really good. I, that's kind of similar to what I do too, actually, but there's this part of just um, sitting outside and meditating or taking your meditation practice out into nature, um, where you're not like exercising in nature, like, whew, then you're going into that, that at least when I do bike riding, I always go into trance. It's fantastic, but there's something about just sitting in nature, almost like a grounding or earthing practice, um, or sitting and meditating with the weather. And there's something about that that sort of resets you. Um, it's, this is, it's keeping the nature exercise, but it's adding this piece of, you're just gonna be with nature, like no other reason than you're just there. And that feels like that's gonna create some shift in your entire, uh, energetic balance. Um, try that. I mean, if you want to do medication, that's, those are all my approach is really one. I'm not a doctor too. Um, I like to try like medicine isn't traditional medicine is not bad, right? It's really good. It's just that evolutionary evolution wise, we're not at the peak of where we're going to be understanding how to how to use medicines and energies we're just where we are now so i'd like to say try what's ever available and see what what has better benefit to you but there's something about this being in nature without expectation of any outcome or without uh, doing any efforts is really important i mean if you were younger i'd say like go roll in the go roll down the lawn, <laughs> you know, it'd just be that kind of, that kind of nature immersion, but uh, you can also just ground, do grounding in the earth and so forth. Um, did you have, I little, can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Like put barefoot <laughs> and go sit with the plants and just be like, I'm doing my thing. Don't, you know, you're not reading, you're not journaling, you're just spacing out sitting there. I think that will change things for you. So. Um, That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, what you had a different question though. Uh, oh, your life's path. So they said they are the guides. Um, there are some things that you still want to do, and 
they are saying don't give up on that so that um, you don't want to miss those. And I'm not sure for you it's really travel necessarily. It might be more having some spiritual experiences. Is there anything like on your spiritual bucket list that you haven't done yet? Um, well, I've been on a spiritual path of uh, discovery, basically, for 30 or 40 years. Right. Um, and still on it. And so I, I, I go down different venues. I'm, I'm fascinated by the field, um, trying to understand a little bit more, trying to you know, take advantage of it, trying to figure out stuff. And that, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I, I, I've been a very young person. I had thought I totally wanted to be in this kind of field and I'm there, but I'm kind of all over the place in it, uh, discovering stuff. And um, I've tried, I have tried to find my guides or, you know, speak to them and stuff like that. I have a little difficulty with that. Um, that's why I turn to people like yourself sometimes uh, to give me some kind of easier, it seems easier access to what I'm trying to find on my own. What um, group like retreats have you done? I mean, maybe not lately because those have been, but what have you longed to do in like a group retreat kind of setting? Have you done much of that? Yes, I have taken different courses to become uh, more psychic. Mm -hmm. um, I have taken uh, courses on uh, faith healing with, with uh, hands, mm -hmm. um, with a group of, a group of people, um, different things like that. Um, what about um, silent? No, and, and a lot. Go. Oh, no, what about like silent retreats? or meditation, just pure meditation retreats or sound healing retreats. Those are I, the things I'm I, getting. Yeah, I haven't done that. Uh, we, we did go to um, kind of a retreat up in Northern California, um, but it was just, it, it, it wasn't necessarily a meditation to retreat. It was just a very quiet retreat with away yeah. from everything, you know? So I think, um, that's what I'm seeing is like this, this, and this kind of relates to the grounding in nature thing too. It's like an opening to the vastness for long periods of time, like you would do at a, a silent retreat or a meditation retreat with no talking or a sound healing retreat where you're just bathed in, you know, the gong and the chimes and all of that looking for something um, where you're not, again, attempting to like achieve anything. I mean, actually it is a 10 achievement to do a, a silent retreat, but uh, at least it would be for me, but you're just like going into vastness and just resting there. And I think that those would be better than trying to learn, uh, you know, somebody's ancient technique or uh, to, to do something where you're, doing a lot of visiting of, of sites. So look for that going into the vastness and staying there without expectation of what's going to happen. And I think that if you can find something like that by summer, that would be really useful. It's almost like you're hovering on a complete new vibrational level, but the practices that you've been doing aren't quite taking you over the edge. And it's almost like you have to try some different things that might even be a little feel weird or uh, feel not quite what you'd want. And that will sort of take you to the next step. That's what I'm receiving. Interesting. So, yeah, vastness. Like, and then again, no expectation. That's what I'm kind of hoping for right. actually myself. I mean, I don't have anything planned retreat wise for this coming year, but um just going and being like really quiet and just really connecting for many hours a day. And that's just sounding like the next thing. So anyway, maybe I'll see you there. Who knows? We had it from the same place. Who knows? Anyway. Hey, thank you for calling. I appreciate uh, your call. Yeah. Yeah.
Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Keep doing what you're thank doing. You. Yeah, thank you. All right, bye thank now. You. Yeah, that's a really, a lot of us, you know, we've been inside, internal, and then as we are going to come out of this um, internal isolation, the first tendency is to want to like, uh, at least I've just been just in the house, right? Or at on a walk or on a bike ride. So my idea of excitement would be like, let's go to a restaurant or let's go to a, a movie at the little movie theater or let's go see some people. So that's the first um, impulse. But then after that, I think for a lot of people who've been on spiritual path, they're going to want to go into this deep place. It's like we've been hungering for it, but we've been more in survival mode or something. Okay. I think we have uh, Rachel. Uh, Rachel from Iowa City. Ah, oh, wonderful. Thank you. Um, nice to have you here. Is it snowy where you are is it in Iowa City? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, we don't have a lot of snow here in Oregon usually, so it's always, I'm always shocked when people are experiencing that so much. Well, what is on your mind? Yeah. Or what can I help you out with today? Well, I have a couple of questions, and I don't know if you can help me with my son. My son, um, who's in a lot of trouble and is, is very confused and misguided, and also just for myself, my own life path into retirement. How old is your son and what is going on for him that you can share? Um, he's 17 and he um, got just very uh, addicted to uh, pot and alcohol and he's uh, committed some robberies and he was in detention and he's just in a lot of trouble and um, he doesn't seem to have much clarity about what's really going on with him and what needs to happen. Where does he, um, does he live with you or is, is there a dad in the picture that's involved with his life? Yes. My, yes. My, my husband and I adopted him from Ethiopia about, um, well, in 2009. Okay. Oh, okay. So he, so he was not tiny when he, he came here. Um, he was just under, just under five years. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just uh, making some notes, kind of thinking about this. Um, so what they're saying is that he's experiencing almost like the trauma of his past bef before you adopted him now. And I don't know if, if the a pandemic has brought that on or the racism of the world has brought that on or if it's just because he's matured to a place where it's just being triggered now um, as he kind of gets yeah. ready to become an adult and, and then he's sort of sifting through all of his experiences um, but he's going to need a lot of help and and he has the ability to get through this, but it's not something that you or your husband are really gonna be able to process with him for quite a while. The help he needs is like rehab and therapy and needing that at an extreme level um, before he turns 18, because once you turn 18, then you're an adult and it's not good. A lot of things take on a different role um it's it's almost like he's he hasn't dealt with his early wounds um and it feels like he really went through a huge amount of very very difficult things when he was little like a lot of trauma and so he's using the drugs and alcohol to disassociate from that and yet those are causing personality changes so that he can't he, his journey is to look at his pain but he's going to need support. Um, what what have you done in terms of getting him a like a really good counselor 
that can deal with uh, well, early ch childhood trauma? Mm -hmm. Well, he's, he has, a, uh, from the United Action for Youth, he has a, a therapist now that was working with him while he was in shelter, and then he went back to detention, so now he's going to get started again with this counselor who is specialized in trauma, and he also has a had a substance abuse evaluation and a psychological evaluation while he was in detention, and so um, he's going to have a substance abuse counselor as well mm -hmm. while he's at shelter. He's just mm -hmm. he's just not allowed to come home yet because the last few yeah. times he's come home, it's been a complete disaster. Yeah, because because what he's dealing with, you you guys aren't really equipped to um, your family. You're not you're not trauma counselors and and you're not drug and alcohol counselors so you're not equipped to deal with what he's um having i think the biggest thing is to keep telling him you are going to get through this but you have to do the work and the work is this initial drop into this incredible pain for him what he went through and he's afraid to look at it and the moment he looks at it with a really good counselor who's going to support him in, in having that breakthrough, things get better. He's going to just start to understand that. Um, and also the minute he gets off drugs and alcohol, uh, he just calms down a lot. That's, that's a lot of the issue right there is that that's exacerbating everything for him. Um, how much do you think that you could accept for yourself and your husband that you guys aren't really the ones to help him right now? What would that feel like? Like you are gonna keep finding him support, but you talking to him or you attempting to work through, that's not really who can help him at the moment. What does that feel like to you? Well, it feels hard to uh, detach, but it also feels like a relief if, if we, because we can't help him. And so it's been feeling like we've just been failing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you haven't been failing. You just don't have the... You don't have this, the training and your family, that's a different role. So your role is unconditional love, mm -hmm. keeping him um, opti opt optimized. Like this is a stage you're facing your early trauma. You will get through it. Life will be better. Um, in terms of the racism where you live, what do you think he's experienced with that? He's experienced some, but he doesn't share it with me. I think and that's... whenever we've tried to, whenever we've tried to like show him documentaries or give him books about it, like since we're not black, mm -hmm. um, a black father written to his son or things like that, he he says he already knows about it all and, and doesn't need to read anything. So he's very uh, closed about it. But I know he must have experienced. He must experience it. What um, types of uh, friends does he have from his own uh, original birth culture? Is, are there any people around in town? Um, there are a few, but he has mostly white friends that are from soccer. Yeah. He's reaching a point where that's not, uh, unfortunately, where you live is probably not um, very ethnically diverse, I'm guessing. I could be wrong, but I'm just guessing it's not very eth ethnically diverse. And that is a lot of what he's suffering from. He just needs to be around people who understand um, the culture that he was born into. And um, that may be something that he ends up seeking as soon as he's able to uh, leave home. That's very important for him. And again, you and your husband can't provide that um, but you can find ways that that could happen. It's, it's mm -hmm. almost like he, he's resisted uh, anything, anything. Yeah. He's resisted anything, Africa, anything, everything Africa yeah. he doesn't want to know about. Yeah. But this is going to start to change as things almost like he's wound so tight and you're just, you take the drugs and alcohol away and then you get some help for the early trauma. Mm -hmm. And then you open up the trauma of racism in the U S and all these things start to kind of open him. So um, okay. I'm actually kind of happy in some ways that he's actually dealing with stuff a little bit 
at a better age. He's dealing with things while he still has support versus if he was like 24. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm actually feeling pretty hopeful about that. And I do also want to say as a, as a parent of, of four now grown children, right? This, yeah. <laughs> this age is horrible no matter what. So it's kind of like he has specific stuff he's dealing with, but if it weren't this, it'd be something, <laughs> it'd be something else most likely. Maybe mm -hmm. some people have beautiful teenagers, but it's a rough time. You know, there's a reason people go away, uh, to, to school and so forth because uh, yeah it they outgrow their ability to live at home so anyway mm -hmm. I I guess there's no way to there's no guarantees but I guess I just want to know if he's going to be okay yeah I think he's gonna I think he as if if you sort of detach and do what you can do which is love him and offer finding resources um, and trust he's going to grow he's going to grow and his life path was to come here for a reason and your life path was to be with him for a reason and don't give up on the hope of that just because, uh, you know, there's this super rocky time right now. It's, there's this uh, phrase that I received in the channeling. It's uh, chaos means change and you're just in chaos now. It's the sign of change to come and changes further opening and development. So that's okay. good. Thank you for calling, you. Rachel. I wish you the best. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, it's hard. You know, and it's not just 17 year olds that go through these incredibly rough patches. It's also, um, you know, 24 year olds and it's also uh, 35 years old and everybody goes through big changes in their early 40s and then we come around again and it's the 50s and there's changes so the 60s it, it's like we're continually going on this up and down path of um, contraction triggering pain suffering and then we open up and move past that and there it comes again contraction pain suffering and then we open up and there's no time that we're not opening up, even when it seems, you know, super hopeless. Okay, let's see. I think we've got Nicole calling from the Northeast. Nicole, welcome to the program. Thank you. Hi, Sarah. Hey. Hi, what can I help you out with today? Well, um, it would be... Uh, about my my path, my vocation or avocation, we spoke about a year ago, after, just after I had experienced a pretty major shift, um, life change, and I've spent the last year doing a lot of inquiry, um, uh, adventuring, I mean, <laughs> relatively speaking, in the pandemic. Um, right. but just yeah. exploring and figuring out <laughs> so you so you went to the grocery um, you went to the grocery store is that what you did no anyway just kidding go ahead <laughs> um so I've just been trying to a lot of things light me up so I've been trying to hone in and see where can I put my energy where is it most useful and we talked about um you know, the fact that I I do want to serve I want to give back I want to help people and um, so I've recently gotten a hit on what I think that might look like. So I wanted to see what you might be seeing. Yeah, tell me further. I don't, um, I may end up remembering what we talked about last time. Sometimes it comes flooding back, but um, yeah, go ahead and say whatever I told you last time and then what you're thinking of doing. And I'm, I'm just gonna kind of tune into that. Okay, I'll go in the reverse order because yeah. I don't remember the exact details of our yeah. call. But um, I, I, it's something in the realm, something in the helping fields. Um, I'm, I've worked in wellness a bit. I'm a yoga instructor. I have interests beyond yoga, energy medicine, other forms of movement education. And I'm just, I'm, I get really excited about helping people discover how they can heal and help themselves to stay healthy. 
So um, I've been trying to formulate some kind of offering around that idea. And, but I also have been getting called upon um, a lot of friends that are in the wellness industry that need technology support. So it's been really interesting. I thought I was going in one direction and now this, this theme keeps coming up with technology and I'm not opposed to it. So I've, I'm kind of formulating an idea that blends the two. Yeah. Um, but you know, when you don't focus on one thing, sometimes it gets complicated. Like I might be making more, um, making things too com complex for success. So what I find is, I think that this is absolutely correct. I think the reason the technology piece has been dropped into your bucket right now is those are skills you're gonna um, super, like you're gonna learn as you do them. And so you're gonna go away from that with like 300% more skills than you thought you had just because you're doing it. Um, so that feels really correct. And is, are these skills like people want to um, teach online and that kind of thing? Is that what they're sort of looking for? Yeah, a lot of people yeah. taking their businesses online for the first time and they just, they yeah. get tangled up in the technology pretty yeah. quickly. So absolutely. And thinking, um, I have been getting massive downloads on this idea of hologram. And I know we don't have hologram yet, right? But the idea that instead of me being on a screen now, uh, like on, I think, Zoom to Facebook. Mm, yeah, uh, I've heard about this. And yeah, so, so then you'd be having people uh, hologramming into the, a studio or whatever, and the students would hologram in and you'd all have this virtual experience as if you were in a studio. No, that's not here yet, right? Um, or those other technologies right. where they've got these screens that you bring into your home and then the instructors on the screen, like a big giant Peloton thing. So that's not happening, but paying attention to those kinds of ideas as you're diving into setting up people's technology um, so that you can sort of have that on your radar for future. It's not here yet, but we will go there. And I'm hoping that I'll be an early adopter once I figure out how to find out about that. Or once we have sort of like when smartphones came, some people had them and some people didn't, but trying to be an early adopter mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. these new technologies for distance learning, especially for group uh, movement or group activities, distance learning, where we're not just having to sit on Zoom calls. Although Zoom is actually really great. So there's that part. And then when you said this part about the movement, um, it's feeling like you have the ability to create your own thing, um, your own practice. It's not quite yoga. It's not quite dance. It's not quite meditation. It's your thing. And to begin to build that. And there's no reason, like these are, these are the technology is building and the movement idea is building. And these are coming at the same time. And there's no problem with that they kind of have to come because they're, they feed each other. Does that make sense to you? Like there, you, you need the technology um, and then the movement, you need that. And then you ex experiment with the te technology to make that happen. So they're happening together. Oh yes, I, I do understand that. But do you say um, you see the potential for me to create my own thing because um, how do I say this? One of one of the struggles I I commonly have is that a lot of the ideas I have I don't act in a what I would think of as a timely manner, and then I see other people doing exactly the thing that I envision doing, and I I get wrapped up in this idea that there's it's not a scarcity mindset per se, but I guess it's some form of that. Like, well, if that's already being done, I don't want to do that. Not because there's there aren't enough people to to partake, but because it's been done. Yeah, I would just uh, let, and it's not unique. I would just I would just let that go. Um, 
you know, I'm a full year, I am a full year or probably more, a full year late to the Zoom party, right? Like you just got to do what's right yeah. for you. And especially, um, it's especially, so I'm a full year late to the Zoom party because I couldn't figure out how to get a little stand for my laptop. I'm not even using a phone as my camera. Like that's how <laughs> behind I am, right? So, so letting yourself know that your timing is perfect and kind of maybe mm -hmm. detaching from paying attention. I don't really pay attention to what anybody's doing. I'm just sort of like working on guidance. So maybe giving yourself that mm -hmm. breather of like, I'm guided. It doesn't matter what anyone else is doing. I'm here for my own perfect path and just mm -hmm. spending some time with that. If you pay attention to what mm -hmm. everyone's doing, you'll never do anything. If you're paying attention to guidance, you'll be very clear on what your next step is always. Kind of letting go of that comparison idea would be good. Yeah. Yeah, um, the but form of yeah, I'm seeing that I'm seeing that we're almost out of time. So I want to let you go. But yeah, I think it is some kind of combo. Yoga, movement, energy healing, meditation, music, it's like, all of that. And some of it's in person and some of it's online. So that's pretty exciting. Okay. Uh, hey, thank you so much for calling. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Nicole. Um, thank you, Sarah. Bye bye. You know, we're going to end the show. Uh, I invite everybody to go to, this was super fun. I liked it. No disasters happened. It was great. Uh, find me at sarahweisman.com. Look for Divine Astrology February report. Look for Intuitology teaching videos. Look for our many, many, I think we've got 34 uh, $15 course, self-study courses, and sign up for Intuition University spring training and we are practically uh, sold out. We will be with you next time. And I think I'm going to play this again on uh, my own Facebook page. But uh, thank you for listening. And I sure appreciate your support. Remember, um, things are getting better day by day. And uh, we can trust that we will move through all of this world situation. We will move through this together. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, being with me today.